Hey guys, hope everyone is doing awesome. If this is your first time here, then welcome. So I'm about to prep my hair for vacation this weekend. My boyfriend and I are going to the mountain. We're gonna be outdoors a lot, doing some hiking. So I'm gonna be converting this wash and go into a braid out. I have a more in-depth video all about my braid out process. The main reason I like to do a braid out on an old wash and go is that I have tried to do them on wet hair, freshly detangled out of the shower, and they turn out horribly. It's tangled, it's just a hot mess. So one day I had a wash and go that I just didn't have time to restyle and get in the shower and all that stuff. I just put some product in my hair and braided it into some like ugly little janky braids. Surprisingly, it was gorgeous when I took the braids out. So this style is definitely one where you gotta see the vision, the end result, because how we get there is not really cute. These braids are some that are just gonna be hanging out until I take them out right before we go out of town. So if you wanna see a more in-depth video about how I take my wash and goes to really cute braid outs, I'll make sure to put a link up here. But I thought it'd be fun to hang out with you guys and do a little story time while I am doing my vacation hair prep all about how I lost not one but two cars in the span of six months through no fault of my own no fault of my own so if any of you have been in the unfortunate position to have ridiculous anti-luck like I have let's commiserate in the comments down below because I, it still doesn't feel real that it happened I'm just like you've got to be kidding me y'all it was a rough few months when this all happened. I mentioned it a little bit on my channel, but we're doing a deep dive today, you guys. We are gonna be having a little bit of a, let me tell you, let me tell you. And not so funnily enough, I thought this situation was pretty much put to bed. We got some more bad news today about the car situation that we are gonna get into. Just, ugh, ridiculous. So when I am taking my wash and goes, to a braid out. I use a variety of different things to choose from. Usually my go-to is a lightweight leave-in conditioner. It's a way for me to reactivate the gel and product that's already in my hair from the wash and go without oversaturating my hair where it's gonna take a really long time for the style to set because I like to leave the braids in for at least two to three days so I can get a really nice braid out pattern on the wash and go. And I find that two or three days is that nice sweet spot. It's also a really nice way for me to re-moisturize my hair and remove shed hair before actually washing my hair all over again. So it's a really nice way for me to extend the days before I have to wash my hair again and get an all new style in the process. Products like these are what I think of when I'm gonna be doing this style. This is a detangling milk from Basque avocado moisture cream from nature's little secret and I haven't tried this yet but I think this would be a great contender for this style and as a traditional leave-in conditioner because I've heard so many good things about it the curl origin curl hydrating leave-in conditioner so the name of the game with this style is using something that's not going to weigh my hair down but give me a nice amount of moisture so that my hair can take on the new shape of the braid out from the wash and go so my car history my car lore up until last summer of 2023 I have had the same car since 2004 yes two 2004 to 2023 I had the same car you guys it was like a member of my family I did a cute little video like saying goodbye to the car and everything that I was gonna post on YouTube it's on TikTok I did cry when we had to get rid of that car but I still might put it on YouTube but just with like a plot twist the other car got freaking jacked up too but I got that car at the beginning of my senior year of high school in 2004 that car has been with me through so many tears good moments bad moments that car had been with me through a lot and it was really hard to say goodbye but the fact that the car was so old it was an 01 Honda Accord for this style I only do five braids really simple but I have to be really careful because my roots are pretty tangled with my wash and go so oh hi <laughs> sorry <laughs> thank you you yeah I'll come and grab it okay. is there anything I have to sign for no, you are good. okay thank you <laughs> thanks you too so I have to be very gentle when I do this style since it's on dry hair and I don't want to cause any breakage. So the first thing that I'll actually use in my hair before using the product that I'm going to be doing the actual style with is that I'll usually use a liquidy spray type of product just to kind of loosen things up a bit, make my hair more pliable. So today I'm going to be using one of my go-to products that I absolutely love. I've been using it on my skin and my hair. It is just pure rose water. So simple, so nice, and also gives your hair a really nice fragrance, especially if you're going to be converting an old style into a new one. I don't spray too much because again, I don't want to oversaturate my hair but just a little bit so I can start to section it for the braids without it being too too prone to breakage oh this smells so good yeah so already my hair is a lot smoother a lot more pliable it doesn't feel like if I start fiddling around with it I'm gonna start messing things up and 
causing lots of breakage and additional tangling. So needless to say, that car had been with me through a lot. I'd had it for almost 20 years. To show how crazy the universe is, in July of 2022, my best friend and I got into an accident. Someone hit me from behind. I had a big dent on my trunk, but it was mainly cosmetic. Everything else worked. The final straw for the car happened in almost to the day last year, July of 2023. In addition to gels and lightweight leave-in conditioners, sometimes I do also use a curl cream to do this style, and that's what I'm going to be using today. I already have it on my hands and I was like, wait a minute, I didn't show you guys before I actually start like really going in and starting to do the braids. This is the Sultanicals Curly Grail Pumpkin Coconut Styling Cocktail. This is one of the seasonal products from Sultanicals. I like this one because it has a little bit more weight to it and because we're going to be doing a lot of nature stuff, I want my hair to be able to withstand that this weekend. So when I take the braid out, out I want it to have a little bit more hold than a more lightweight product would usually give me. But this is still very focused on moisture, just has a touch more hold to it and it's very, very softening. I like to use very moisturizing products because they make my hair so much more pliable, but it's not making my hair feel wet. It's just damp enough so that it can turn into a braid out pattern versus my natural curls right here from the wash and go. So last summer, someone hit my car from the side and it was a wrap after that. I already had some other stuff going on with the car because it was older and it was at the point where it would cost more to fix the car than the car was worth. So I had been thinking about getting a new car for a few years now, but I was just hanging on to that one. It was so nice not having the car payment. I knew that car like the back of my hand, like it was effortless. So this big old section is going to be two braids over here. The next one is gonna be two and then right up top here is gonna be my fifth and final braid. So I am going to gently separate right here this is where I have to be super super careful because these roots are doing a lot so when I am separating for each individual braid I just take my time a little bit more product focusing on the roots because they need it <laughs> they really really need it so last year we started car shopping and I ended up getting a new car that was the same make and model as my old one just a 2018 versus a 2001 so it was like a night and day I feel like I was driving a spaceship compared to my old car it was so different weird to have a Bluetooth I have not had a functioning form of music in the car for like five years so to be able to just connect my phone and listen to music was like a revelation Anytime I was in someone's car that did that, I was just like, oh, one day this will be me. And it was me. And it was really, really cool. But I did not really love the car. I felt very under the gun. I needed a car to be able to go see my boyfriend. We live not super, super close to each other. So I missed him. I wanted to be able to go see him, let alone just be able to do things like grocery shopping, run errands, what have you. It was one of those things where we went to a dealership where they they were very dealershipy. If you leave today, this deal leaves too. This is a one time while you're here deal. Even my mom and I went to lunch to talk about it. Like, should we do it? Should we not do it? And finally, after like pros and cons and thinking about it, we decided to go ahead and get it. And from the moment I was in that car, I was never super, super comfortable. Like there were a list of <laughs> grievances. One of the things is that it was a sports model and I didn't know that that would be such a big deal until I actually started driving the car. It was so low to the ground that every little speed bump felt like I was going to remove something from the bottom of the car. It was so stressful. Every little thing on the road that you would normally not think about, I thought about because I felt every little thing and it was just too close too tight to everything and speaking of tight the inside of the car was not pleasant at all it was very very low also because it was a sports model and I have a big head and a lot of hair so if I would wear a bun my bun would be like smushed so I just felt very claustrophobic in the car this was also my first time having a screen in the car and it was obstructing like the window it wasn't built into the actual dash it wasn't good on gas there were just so many things to where I definitely had like oh uh, did I make a mistake but I was happy to have a car so I was getting to know Know it learning it kind of its little idiosyncrasies and you know after a while I got more used to it but I never loved it loved it like I was already thinking and my best friend was like the universe is listening so I was already like for my next car I want it to be like this I want it to be like that I don't want this I want that I didn't mean like this though universe so we got the car in August of last year fast forward to January 2024 this year I am getting psychic I this is like not even a joke not even like 
an exaggeration. So, side tangent, my mom has like, <laughs> she can see things before they happen like she has dreams things like that and they come to pass she's had that for a significant portion of her life i think it really started when she was like well into adulthood and it's been like that since i was a little girl that she's had like this like sight that she could see things before they happen and i'm starting to get that and it's I don't like it. It's creepy. So the first example of it is so random. Queen Elizabeth's husband, Prince Harry, Prince William's grandpapa. I thought two days before he passed away. I think the King Philip is gonna die soon. I don't think about this man. He was not a subject that was frequently on my mind at all, but I just had this random out of nowhere feeling like two days later that man is gone. Granted, he looked like he wasn't long for the world anyway, so, you know, there's that. But just the timing, the thought out of nowhere, so, so strange. But this is my hair. Ooh, yes, I'm so happy I ended up using this product. My hair feels so, so moisturized. I'm removing some shed hair, so that's helping with, like, the bulkiness of my roots right here. They're starting to get tangled, which is going to help the overall braid out. It's just, ooh, I like this. I like this a lot. So I'm going to add a little bit more to the roots here just to smooth things. Another example of this weird new foresight that I have, I thought at the beginning of the year, like, I think this is the year that we lose Tina Turner. And I was so sad because I always had good memories of her music growing up. Her as a person, she just seemed awesome. So I just had this weird thought of like, this is the year we lose Tina Turner. And I was so sad and I'm like, I hope I'm wrong. But that ended up happening too. So I don't know why my powers or whatever are focused around death I don't like that my mom's are too she can like predict people passing away it's y'all I don't like it I don't like it so the night of the car accident I was at my boyfriend's house he sleeps so well so instantly I on the other hand I always have to have my like anxious thoughts kind of running around before I can go to sleep so that night I randomly thought out of nowhere I had been going over his house staying the night for almost a year at that point never had this thought that night though in particular I had the thought for the first time, what if my car gets hit outside? Y'all, I, it was, I hate even thinking about it because I can't believe it actually happened. I predicted the accident the night before. And of course he was already asleep. I wasn't going to wake him up and tell him. I thought it was just one of my normal anxious thoughts popping in my head because I'm an anxious person. But no, it was not it. That was like, a, it was a warning. Three something in the morning, we hear this huge crash outside like, metal and glass instantly and I just had this heart sinking feeling where I park outside and where his window is you can tell like proximity sounds and stuff I knew it was my car I just had a feeling like oh my god I know that didn't just happen it was bad and we were so confused because it's almost four o'clock in the morning and we we're like what the f just what just happened so he ended up going outside remember it is january it's very cold so he told me to stay inside and he was gonna go check out what happened he looked and it was like oh it looks like someone like got into an accident or hit a tree or something because it was so loud because you see all this debris and then we didn't know for sure it was my car because we're all like you know half asleep he was like you can see all this debris on the street it's crazy i'm like that is crazy and so i'm looking out the window trying to figure out what's going on and i'm like I can't see my car. Where's my car? I park in the same space every time I come over there. I'm like, where is my car? I don't know what's going on. So I was like, someone must have stolen my car around the same time as the accident. Isn't that weird? I was like, what are the chances? There are no chances. I just wasn't putting two and two together because my car didn't look at my car anymore, y'all. That's how bad it was. He hit it so hard that it didn't even look recognizable as my car anymore. I'm gonna insert pictures and video of the car throughout this video to show you guys exactly what happened to my poor little blue baby. Here is what we are looking at right after the accident. Let me see, there we go, autofocus. It is in someone else's house. I'm gonna show you guys the pictures of that. So did you like a little diagram? So this is one side of the street, this is the other side of the street, right? My boyfriend's house is right here. I park right here on the street where my boyfriend's house is. Three houses down across the street, this dude hit my car so hard that it went up into someone's house, into their stairs, he pushed it. Three houses down across the street was how bad the impact was. So we thought the way that it had landed in someone else's house, we thought it was their car. It looked so scrunched up like a little accordion compared to where it used to be. So. 
we didn't put two and two together. This is where it got pushed into the neighbor's stairs right here. Here's a little piece of the light like right at their doorstep. Thank goodness it didn't get into like the actual structure of their house. Just freaking. Here's an angle to show you right where it was at the front of the house. And keep in mind, this is from across the street, three houses down that it was pushed so hard into someone else's house what and it was so so cold the night this happened you guys all three of us my boyfriend i and the cop our fingers were hurting they were so cold and here's the damage in the light of day when i was able to go to the collision center to see just how everything was like i don't know what this piece is it looks like the car is melting or something like this piece right here this underside just oh my gosh this was the front of the car there's just bits of metal steel and just hot mess destruction and just metallic hot mess destruction wires cords you name it just oozing out of the car he hit my car so hard that it literally burst the case of water that i had in my trunk and like ripped the plastic my little last video that i took of it for the insurance company that you know and the court case that I thought was going to happen, but I guess it's not going to at this point. Poor little thing. But his neighbor, oh yeah, here's my braids. That's what we're working with. Very cute, very cute. It's not overly saturated. It's just saturated enough to where it feels very moisturized. And it'll be able to take on the shape of the braids when I take these out. So then we were going to be moving on to the next section. He lives in a duplex. So he's on the top floor. His neighbor's on the bottom. She came outside to see what's going on because it was right outside their front door. The type of sound where you know something really bad has happened. So she and my boyfriend were standing there. And then she was like, that's actually his car. And when he looked, he had that like, oh realization like oh no oh no like it was bad and i was on the phone with 911 at this time reporting my car is stolen he was like do you know where your car is and i was like someone stole it i was like isn't that crazy like what are the chances he was like mm -mm. so he brought me to the window and he was like that's your car over there and he pointed to his neighbor's house across the street and i just had this like sinking pit feeling and i was like no like it was so bad and so i told the <laughs> told the 911 lady what was going on now that we knew what was happening and mind you the person that hit my car it was this big huge monster truck he was at the other end of the street and he was just sitting there and at first we were like we this is before we knew he hit my car and what had happened he was just sitting there almost like he was thinking about something like parking lights on just sitting there not moving and we were like what the heck is that dude doing he must have been the one that hit whatever was hit before we realized it was my car my boyfriend went to go talk to him and like get his information chase him down of course this mofo takes off right when he sees him coming i was like you hit and run piece of shit i was so pissed so i'm telling the 911 lady and thankfully i'm so grateful to his neighbor she was able to see the details of the truck she was able to kind of see the make and model the color details that the cops would be able to see so as she was telling me i was telling the 911 lady like it's a white big monster truck looking car the front end should be completely destroyed because it completely destroyed my car so it should have some major damage on it and i told her what street it turned on so she sent some cops to find it and this whole time y'all i am freaking out i am screaming i am crying i don't have on a bra i am cold i'm mad i kept repeating over and over again are you serious are you serious over and over again because i was just like there's no way i got this car in august after waiting almost 20 years to get a new car i finally get a new car in august and in january it is destroyed i was just like there's no way and the fact that i predicted that it was gonna happen is insane it's a very very narrow street i do not like that street i don't like it even more now somehow some way people knew how to drive until this jackass he was going probably like 60 in a 25 and he just boom just destroyed my freaking car how could you tell the difference between just a random bout of anxiety and like oh maybe this is a warning to move my car i there's no way to tell i'm gonna heed that stuff now though but at the moment at you know 
12 1 o'clock in the morning i wasn't thinking about moving my car i'd have weird thoughts all the time about worst case scenarios so i just thought like that's a weird thought that popped in my head but now if i have a thought like that yeah i i will be acting add a little bit more rose water because this is always my problem child section of my hair so it's always a little bit more tangled so one of the officers gets to the house he tells us that they're looking for the guy he's taking pictures he's in shock because it's literally been hit so hard that it's in someone else his house across the street three doors down like the impact is horrible you can see the skid marks of where it happened from where it was parked to where it was pushed it's just like a crazy crazy scene he gets a notification that the guy was found and i was like oh thank god i had the sense of relief as you'll find out the sense of relief was definitely misplaced this, this situation is trash they said they interviewed the guy he was under the influence i beg to differ how are you going to take a super narrow road with cars parked on two sides 60 miles an hour and you are like of sound mind like come on now so he might not be drunk but he was under influence of something i think but he said he took off because he was scared oh i destroyed someone else's property i'm so scared so i'm like i don't want to hear that he's trash how dare you just like do that to someone else's property and then just leave like a total coward you didn't leave you were scared you didn't want to get caught point blank simple i think they said they were charging him from leaving the scene even though the cop did not check that he left the scene on the police report and i had to call and ask him about that like um you didn't check that because i wanted to make sure that all my eyes were dotted and t's crossed it didn't matter in the end but yeah so they found the guy i was like oh good his insurance is gonna take care of everything blah 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 so they tried to tow my car but because i couldn't leave it on other people's property because it was literally in someone's house for something in the morning there was no tow company to where i could drop it off i had to get it towed across i live across tunnels and bodies of water so i would need to get it towed somewhere probably my mom's house where it would be safe since it was just like a pile of metal at this point at four or five something in the morning because it couldn't come to my house i live in an apartment and it would just be parts and bits everywhere we called to get it towed and the tow guy came and he was like i've never seen anything like this before he was like i literally like i cannot move it because it's in someone's house like it's been pushed into someone's house like it's a whole nother thing at play now like their properties involved it's so it's destroyed he was like it's a, it's gonna be a total loss he was like we i can't take it i'm like okay so what do i do so i kept calling AAA, and they kept transferring me to people and remember y'all it is like early in the morning like they kept transferring me to people so the main office was closed and then when i was calling for roadside assistance they would transfer me and it was transferring me to someone asking for an access code and then i would tell the person when i called back they were asking for that they were like we don't know what you're talking about they were like we don't know what that is i'm like you work here here I don't. I don't know what it is either. Oh, this part, this one is tangled. Tangled, tangled. I gotta be extra careful over here. I already feel like I broke off a couple pieces when I was just applying the product because this section gave me a lot of grief last wash day, so it's still acting up. But the rose water plus the curl cream has helped tremendously. It's already a lot better than where we were, so we are going to add little bit more product to do the actual braid so the officer suggested the city actually towing it to that impound lot and i really didn't want to do that i wanted to keep everything in house with the insurance company to try to make things as simple as possible fool's errand that was but eventually the best thing was just to have it towed by the city because it couldn't stay on someone else's property legally so this all happened on sunday morning so monday we had it towed to the collision center they looked at it they were like yeah i'm pretty sure right when they saw it come in they're like this is going to be a total loss I was like I figured so I'm like okay they're gonna go after his insurance company I'm gonna get you know the value for this car and be able to get a new car y'all they could not find that man even though the police report had his name date of birth driver's license number his address even his insurance information was on the police report I don't know I wasn't there of course when they caught him so I don't know if the police just took his word for it and let him just recite stuff from his ass basically of what his insurance was and the number or if they actually checked it because when we called when our insurance company called they could not find this man anywhere in their records the officer told me that we were gonna have to go to court because of the level of damage and because of his negligence and i was gonna have to go as a witness and i was gonna be subpoenaed i was like okay we'll find him that way then nope 
he is a ghost i'm gonna add a little bit more product because it is very very tangled my mom even looked him up and found out that he is a business owner we found out the name of his business all this other stuff i'm like oh yeah we're going after this business we're doing this and that that's not how it works the insurance company paid for the value of the car and that's it like no additional anything and they couldn't find this guy to be able to get more money for the car if they were to find him it would have been so much more helpful for us the insurance companies didn't have a record of him it was really weird there's some shady stuff going on so the insurance company that he listed that he had they did get in touch with the insurance company and they said he came in in person and he said that he was at fault for an accident he admitted guilt and everything Thing. Well, a week later, my insurance company called them and they were like, oh, he's not actually our client. What are you talking about? He's not. You don't just arbitrarily go into a random insurance company. Hey, I hit someone's car and destroyed it. It was all my fault. Just want to let y'all know. And he's not your client. There are lies and shenanigans all up and down this situation so i had to give my rental car back and in the meantime i'm having to rely on friends and family to help me just to be able to do normal just everyday things run errands grab food accident happened like january 24th and i just got my new car in march so after the rental car it was about a month month and a half without having a car and i since i have been an adult I've never not had access to a car. So it was, you feel very trapped. We don't have the best public transit around here and I wouldn't use it anyway because people around here are crazy. So no thank you. But we don't have a lot of options around here. So I just felt very trapped. I felt so stressed and I just felt really hopeless. But I didn't want to settle. I didn't want to hoopty. I didn't want to go back in time and get like a car that was as old as the one that I had gotten rid of previously. I'm like, I finally had a modern car and now I have to go backwards and I didn't even cause this situation. I feel like I'm being punished. And I didn't even do anything. We went to so many dealerships. I looked on Facebook Marketplace. It was a hot mess on there. I ended up finding a car and it is such a better fit for me than my last car. That is the only the only ray of sunshine I can find in this whole situation. It's so much more comfortable. It has amenities that the last one didn't have. And it's cheaper. That comfort when driving where you just know you're safe, you're good. I felt that very, very quickly with this car. I like the color a lot more. Okay. I think I got that little mean tangle out of my hair, finally. I think. Happy curls, happy curls. Much, much better. Because we just addressed that, I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more of the cream to do round two of attempting to do the braid. Kind of resigned myself, but not really because I'm a Scorpio and I, I will remember, I will hold this grudge for the rest of my life. Kind of came to terms with the fact that the person that caused all this stress, all this drama, all this financial stress was not going to pay the way that he needed to pay. Because the insurance company, they said, okay, we'll pay off the loan for the last car, but that's it, That that's it. As I mentioned, it would have been a better outcome financially if they were able to find him through his insurance company and recoup that way. But then paying off the loan of the last car was kind of like best case scenario, and then just having to get a new loan, new terms for this new car. Three sections from my braid, and still I haven't gotten anything in the mail about going to court. So I'm like, I guess he's just gonna get off scot-free for now, but I hope karma will come knocking on his door sooner rather than later. Oh yeah, and we did go see our lawyer to talk about all this to see if there was any recourse but he was basically like once you call the insurance company and you have them to handle the claim on your behalf you subject and this is so boring all this legal stuff but not to get too in the weeds with like the policy and the legalities of it too much but once you give the insurance company permission to file the claim on your behalf apparently in my state you lose the right to sue the at-fault person once your insurance company acts on your behalf they are the ones in control of everything and they are the ones that have the right to follow any legal proceedings like that you you don't have that anymore i didn't know that our lawyer was like i wish you would have called me before you called the insurance company sir it was four in the morning yay that little janky braid is all done i have worked in claims before not auto claims but claims in general and you have a lot of stuff at your disposal when it comes to being able to locate people and since we had all this man's personal information i feel like my insurance company could have tried harder to locate him but at that point i was like it is what it is the case is closed or so i thought so today 
when I was planning to film this video, I noticed I got an email and they were like, hi, your loan is in default now for the previous car. What are you talking about, bro? We talked about all this, my insurance company, the bank, the loan people, that we were all on the same page or so I thought. Always get everything in writing, y'all. My insurance company paid off what the car was worth, but because the place where I got that previous car, they make you get all these extra bells and whistles because you're like a their dealership stuff i don't know what to, it's one of those things where it comes with like oh free oil change it's not free if you're paying for it but it comes with free oil changes for two years and in inspections or whatever and you add that on to the total loan amount you can't opt out of it i y'all i'll never go there again but yeah you cannot opt out of it and they add that on so the insurance company paid for the car value but they didn't pay for that part so now we're on the hook for that part, which we did not know, which no one conveyed to us. We gotta start reading every little, every little bit of this boring crap they give you apparently. I have learned to research, research, and research some more. I took what I learned from getting that last car into getting my current car, and now I will take what I'm learning from this experience to any knock on wood experiences like this in the future because it is a hot mess it's horrible and one day i'm gonna have to get gap insurance because everyone keeps mentioning did you have gap insurance where's what about the gap insurance i called another lawyer today did you have gap insurance no sir i didn't i wish i would have because apparently that would have helped but because i was not in the car because i did not get personally injured i was injured mentally though y'all i cried so much and was so stressed and just tortured over this situation for the past couple of months that i was in pain i had pain and suffering but again in my state they don't care about that if i wasn't in the car if i wasn't personally physically injured that's not even a thing the lawyer i talked to today pretty much reiterated what our lawyer said like they paid out the loan it is what it is it's on you guys and now that's what they're saying like on all corners my insurance company the bank who we got a second loan through for my new car you guys have a loan for anyway it just sucks it's not fair and I'm mad about it <laughs> so I just wanted to tell you guys the tale of how I lost not one but two cars in the span of six months learn from my mistake read 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 some more your terms and conditions from your insurance company I'll be doing that with many more aspects of my life going forward I'm happy that my boyfriend and I were not in the car I'm one of those people now y'all I park far away from other people if I can I am very paranoid now when I go over his house he gave up his parking spot for me to park there and he parks on the street now so I got two more braids to go all done with my <laughs> trust the process braids I am probably gonna keep these in as I mentioned today is Tuesday probably gonna take them out Wednesday night because we're leaving really early Friday morning so then I'll be able to wear my hair down if I want if we're going out to eat or put it up for the hike or when we're going to be in the hot tub or whatever right now they are a little damp with product and with that rose water but I'm guessing that they will be all dry by the time I go to bed tonight they got some nice shine on them I am about to go for a walk so that'll help to speed up the drying process as well as you can see the roots are kind of <laughs> kind of interesting but this is is usually what my hair looks like when I put it in braids after a wash and go so I'll be back to show you guys how everything turned out after letting these marinate for a couple days so we've let these braids sit and hang out for like mm, two days now everything is nice and dry so I am about to start packing for the trip it's gonna be a lots of busy things going on for the next few hours and we're gonna be leaving really early tomorrow morning so I'm gonna go ahead and take these braids out now last section is done i haven't really done any separating or anything like that but i'll probably kind of leave it alone and not do too much separating because like i mentioned we're gonna be doing a lot of nature stuff so kind of keeping it like this until maybe after like our big hike my hair is so nice and smooth and hydrated got some nice shine going the gel that was already in my hair from the wash and go helped to give me some really nice definition as well so i hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me while i do my hair and tell you guys about the crazy horrible bad no good luck i've been having with cars lately so hopefully this new car will be a-okay and i'll get many many happy years out of it to come so if you guys enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up like comment share subscribe comment down below if you have any crazy bad luck experiences 
that you want to share because I'm just like what is it why is the universe mad at me right now so it would just be nice to kind of commiserate remember that I upload videos every Friday with some shorts in the meantime in between time and I will see you really soon in the next one take care guys bye